talk about the myth, <coughs> sorry, right, the myth of mental illness and psychedelic healing. The two are very interrelated. Um, one, that we're about to I'm just going to have man, I don't care. I'm not just now. I'm just checking to see if you think I'm mad. Right? Because that's all part of it. Is if I'm acting like this, right? do you think I'm mad? Do you? First of all, do you believe? Do you believe it when I say that it's a myth? Um, let's get this something straight. I'm not saying people don't feel distress. I'm not saying people won't have them in the, in the extreme forms and say like so called psychosis, right? Where they might see poor spirits, mythical entities, you name it, you know. I'm, I'm not saying that doesn't exist. What I'm saying is, is that the response to it by our culture is pathetic. Now, they might argue that there's no time to um, administer to people who feel like that, but that's no excuse. Well, what is usually done is it's called biological disease, meaning that the brain is defective, right? Brain is defective. But what intelligent researchers have found, people that have been with people in these extreme states, is that it's a self-healing process going on, right? It takes time and care with the people. But what our culture does is, because it's based on well, social, social control and um, consumerism and productivity, you know, industrial fascism, um, mechanistic oppression, they will not want to deal with this kind of thing. This is like, you know, to do with, um, it's beyond their ken, right? And then, of course, you've got the, the, the real social controllers who want to keep us in boxes anyway. They don't want you self-healing and, and coming to uh, deeper ways of experiencing reality and seeing through the cage cages that they've created. They don't want that. And much sooner you be fed a model um, that is, that if you don't feel how they suggest you should feel, which is like a fairly contented consumer, <laughs> you know, fairly contented consumer, that if you don't feel like that and you just feel happy and, and into deeper states of distress, that you're mentally ill and you need drugging. Right, so that's that's that. I mean, I obviously, want to explore this, it's a massive subject, and um, but this is really just like an overview. Um, 
Now LSD or psychedelics or entheogenic healing doesn't have to be just LSD, but there is going to be there is like resurgence of um, psychedelic therapies that I've been hearing, and of course one of the main major drugs um, will be LSD and MDMA. I put a link on one of my videos about uh, this guy Torsten Passy who's really one of the few who's looking into this. This is how divorced everybody is. All the so-called um, mental illness movement they're basically a lot of them just as trapped as as we are, you know, making a packet out of it, like some of them, but just trapped in this mechanistic myth, you know, trapped in, you know, and a lot of them are frightened of getting into this this field because it will blow a lot of things away. But um, the difference between so-called medication in, in, exist, in existence for mentally ill people um, and the psychedelics is that the former suppress emotions and the, the, the spirit as the psychedelics kind of like offer um, catalyst to bring it out, you know. So I think this is really, really vital because if there's one thing that people need in this world, it's, it's healing. 